Hello there, Professor Zeeb here, and welcome again into another video lecture as part of our class here. Uh, so today, this time, what we're going to talk about is Levinson's Seasons of a Man's Life. It's kind of an interesting one, a little bit on the theory side. So basically, Levinson, and this goes back to the late 70s, so it's an older theory in that sense, but he interviewed several middle-aged men asked them to reflect back on their lives and he noticed some patterns. When he looked over his data and the responses of his subjects, he found certain patterns, almost like different phases or seasons, if you would, that a man would transition through as they go through adulthood. Now, even though the subjects were male, Levinson believed that a lot of these stages can apply to females. I'll let you make up your own mind if you agree with that but certainly in some ways they, it could apply to the female side as well. So let's get into our specific uh, details here as we go to our slides. All right, so Levinson's season, Seasons of a Man's Life. Once again, he interviewed several middle-aged men to reflect back on their lives. And he noticed that a lot of them reported these sort of phases or seasons that they would progress through up to that point in middle age. He noticed that a lot of these stages or seasons, if you will, were characterized by flexibility, but also by transition. So it's almost like these different phases or changes uh, we would have to go through where we would have to adapt and change our life to fit with kind of what's currently going on in our life uh, circumstances and so on. Remember, the subjects were basically male, uh, so the critics will say it's more of a male theory, but, but Levinson believed it applies to everyone, okay? You also have to realize is that when he's collecting his data, he's asking middle-aged men to report their life experiences based on, you know, their memory and going back and, and reminiscing. So that can be problematic, because as we know, memory can be a fragile thing and it could be distorted in, in many different ways. So are they actually remembering it as it actually happened? So it is, a val is it a valid uh, theory? That can be questionable. Some people disagree because they're relying on memory. It may not be as accurate as it could be. This theory actually covers about 17 to about 65 in terms of ages. So young adulthood, middle adulthood leading up to late adulthood. So it's definitely applicable to where we are in the class and so forth, all right? So let's take a look at some of these seasons, if you would. All right, so once again, we go to Levinson Seasons of Man's Life. One of the first phases he noted in his research, and this was more for the teenage years what the men were reporting, is that they would go from this transition from dependence to independence. And we've talked about this a lot in the class as we're forming our identity and breaking away from our parents' control, for example. So Levinson often believed, or what he sort of theorized here, is that men of this age, once again, during our teens, form what's, what is called a dream. He called it the dream. A dream is formed for most men during this time, according to the data. In other words, what that is, it's an image of what you want to be. So remember, we've talked about a lot, a lot of this with identity, we're forming that. So we have this vision or this sort of idea of what we actually want to become when we're a teenager as we get older. So we call that the dream. You know, and this could be in terms of things like career or marriage. You know, do I want to get married? Do I want to stay single? What area do I want to go into in terms of my career? Okay, that kind of thing. Uh, so in other words, the young, young boy or man, I guess in this case, teenager, adolescent, is imagining the possibilities of life. So if you guys remember, we talked about this with the emerging adulthood section. So it seems like, you know, the sky is the limit. There's all these possibilities of who I, who I could become. So it's an exciting phase uh, in our life as we're sort of creating this dream of who we want to become. Then we get into our 20s. And so he called this the novice phase of adult development. In other words, novice meaning a beginner, in terms of the adult sense, where he found it was pretty consistent for young men in their 20s to experiment and to test the dream. Remember, the dream is formed early, so now we're actually experimenting and playing with it and testing it out 
to see if it's uh, if it can fit in the real world. Can I actually obtain this dream? Is it a realistic dream? Can I actually meet those goals that I've set for myself early on? One of the ways he found that men do this, and I certainly can relate to this, is that we would seek a mentor for guidance and advice. In other words, we would seek someone in our life, probably older, probably more experienced, where we would ask them questions and ask for their guidance in terms of who we're gonna become or in terms of meeting those goals. So certainly when I look at my own life, reflecting back, uh, there were several people in my life that served as a mentor, you know, whether it was a, in a career sort of situation, I actually shadowed a school psychologist for a while. But to me, what immediately comes to mind, just to personally relate to this, is my sister's husband who was older than my sister was about seven years older than me and of course her husband was a little bit older too and he was actually a counselor and a psychologist and it turns out he was the one that encouraged me to go into psychology and here i am you know teaching psychology online and in classroom i've done this for 16 years now so certainly there's been a lot of people in my own life where i looked for guidance and advice now remember this doesn't necessarily appear apply to career uh, in and of itself. It could, it could apply to relationships or how you handle stress, for example. So it could sort of uh, lead to other areas or, or involve other areas. But to me, the one that makes the most sense is, is career, as we're sort of discovering who we're going to be in, in, in that sense. Levinson found that during this time, a lot of men are building their strengths. So they're building their skill set, they're getting training, you know, they're taking classes, doing things like that, and then finding a career that actually matches that skill set. So in our 20s, we're often trying to figure that out. You know, what am I going to be good at? What do I have? How can I improve that to obtain this? So pretty common for people to be in their 20s and sort of doing those sort of things. All right, then we get a little bit older into our 30s. And Levinson felt that our 30s are really a time for focusing on family and career development, so even further developing the career. So he found that by interviewing these men, it was pretty typical for them to, to start to adjust their goals and to start to, to think about family a little bit more than ever before. So maybe they started off, wow, I want to be this independent person and I want to be this career-minded person. But then as they got older, they understood the, the importance of family and raising children and that kind of thing. So it's pretty popular in the 30s, or, or consistent, I should say, for men to start to think about those things and even have to tweak the dream, so to speak, or adjust their goals to sort of allow them to, you know, go into the family realm, uh, to raise children, or even to change careers in some cases. In other words, as Levinson said, men are becoming their own man during this time. So in other words, we have dreams, we have skill sets, but sometimes our goals are unreachable and we have to adjust things or life happens and we have to adjust. So pretty popular or consistent once again in our 30s to sort of do those things. Then we get to the 40s. So this is the last section we're gonna talk about here where a man has a stable career in most cases, now must look forward to the kind of life he will lead as a middle-aged adult. In other words, you're looking forward even more. Okay, I have this career. I've satisfied this goal. How do I want to live my life as a middle-aged person? You know, how do I want to sort of progress from this point on? So Levinson found that going through these stages as a man, and remember, this can relate to women as well, is that we start to weigh different concerns in our life and we're going, to, we're going to talk about those. In other words, there's certain transitions that we have to go through. And you could argue they're involved in each one of these stages, by the way. So let's talk about those. Uh, young versus old is one of the first transitions uh, that he talked about. So in other words, obviously, when we're a teenager, a lot of the, the emphasis and focus is on being young and being, you know, things surrounding what being young is. And then you get to a certain point where you mature. And those things aren't as important anymore and you start to become, become older in that sense. You know, remember, I'm not just saying as an age thing, but psychologically, emotionally, you, you become more mature and approach things very differently. So the young versus old thing is a major transition that we go through during, you know, as we progress through these stages. Secondly, being destructive versus constructive. So destructive versus constructive. In other words, a lot of times when we're younger, 
We often leave a, lead a lifestyle that can be a little dangerous, a little bit on the edge. We may be more willing to take risks, for example. I know I certainly did when I was younger. But as we get older and become more mature, then we start to think more about being constructive as a person and those, those sort of values change. So we found that uh, we value or weigh the options of being destructive versus constructive. Okay, thirdly, masculinity versus femininity. In other words, being masculine or feminine. In other words, when we're younger, it seems that a lot of the things that surround being masculine, being a macho man or whatever you wanna call that, are a lot more important when you're young compared to when you're older. And certainly that starts to change. You start to value different things as you become older. We're gonna talk about this more in our next stage, in our older adulthood stage, where we, we see research actually backing this up. But Levinson did find that men start to get, in, get more in touch with their feminine side. Now remember, that doesn't mean that they're becoming transgender or you know, however you interpret that. It just means that what is more valued as being a man early on can change as we get older and we start to kind of tap into different areas in, the, in those uh, concepts. All right, and then lastly, attachment versus separation. In other words, when we're young, we're really attached to our parents, we're attached to certain ideals based on our upbringing. But as we get older, we start to separate from those, right? We start to kind of uh, be released from our parents' control and our ideals, and we become our own person, as we said, as we progress through these different stages. So the attachment thing starts to weaken, we become more independent and more separated from those ideals as we mature and develop as a human being, okay? All right, so Levinson believed that a lot of these conflicts are essentially worked through in our early 40s. Certainly by the time you're 45, we would expect that those conflicts have been mastered. We're gonna work through those and the success of these conflicts helps with the effectiveness of the transition that he's talking about in this theory. So in other words, how smoothly you go through those transitions that we've just mentioned, the four conflicts, often is related to how smooth the transition will be by the time you become middle-aged and progress through these stages. So there's a relationship to that. In other words, if you're holding on to being young all the time and you wanna be attached to people and you, know, you value different things uh, as most younger people do, that transition is gonna be a lot more difficult for the person because they're holding on to those. They're not sort of learning to break away from those and becoming more mature and developing and progressing psychologically, emotionally as a person. So that's kind of what he meant by that. All right. So hopefully this has uh, let you understand Levinson's theory a little bit more uh, and, and you got a good grasp of it. All right. So uh, keep progressing with the class guys and we will see you online. That will conclude our short lecture here. Thank you.